Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum. Straight talk about you and your money. Now from the BizTalk studios, here is Gary Kaltbaum. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. I'm Gary Kalp. I'm your host. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Glad you're here, ladies and gentlemen. Happy that you are listening. It is uh, Monday, March 25th, 2024. We have a uh, short week this week. Uh, Good Friday is Friday. Uh, so four days of the market. We should have, you know, Bernie Sanders says we should only be working four days. I almost agree with him on the markets. Okay, I really don't. Anyway. I would be a hypocrite, right? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is serious talk about everything that affects you and your life and your money and the markets and the economy and jobs and unemployment and taxes, deaths and spending, scams, shams, corruption, you name it, we cover it. And we don't mess around. We have no bias. We hate them all. And I know hate is a big word, but it's $35 trillion of debt. And now we're having $3 trillion yearly deficits. No, really, $3 trillion? Hate's an apropos word. If you do not get this radio show in your city, we will post it at GaryK.com. We'll also post it on our Twitter feed, which is now X. And if you don't follow us on X, you should just go there, put, put our name in, and you can email me. All you got to do is be nice. I got an email last week from somebody that said I had Gil Morales on, and we did that show, and I, I received a couple of hundred emails thanking us for the show i had one email from one guy basically saying we both suck now what can you do can't please everybody but i want to start the show with a couple of things that are of import last week on this show if you do recall i had brought up recent ipos initial public offerings last week and we actually warned you, but used our normal terminology of we're not telling you to buy, sell, short, or cover. But we're just letting you know, here are some numbers. And as always, you get to decide. So I mentioned this name, Astera Labs. As you know, Reddit came public. And I'll get to that in a minute, but Astera Labs came public. I had never heard in the company until it came public. And basically, they described themselves as design semiconductor-based connectivity solutions to unleash the potential of cloud and artificial intelligence infrastructure. And we had told you that they came out with the stock at... When they open, there's 153 million shares outstanding, and I believe they brought it out at like 36, giving it like a five billion and change market cap. And I said to you, "Wow." The reason I said "Wow" is because they only have 100 million in revenues, and they'd never made any money. So we just said to, hey, we're just letting you know. And we gave you the example of Rivian way back when, when we saved you, you know what, if you listen to us. But this is not even close to Rivian. Rivian was just a joke as far as valuation. But still, they were able to, a $36 deal, 55 times sales, and they've never made any money. Okay. Well, they opened it up at 51, closed it at 62. And on Thursday, they had it up to 80 bucks during the day. Now, last I looked, that give, gave it about a $12 billion market cap. And in case you don't know, this is really how it works. If, if you were to buy the company out at the market price, you'd pay $12 billion for a company with $100 million in sales and loses money. And this is not a commentary on the company. Because who knows what they're going to do? This is a comp uh, this is a commentary on the valuation of a stock. So Friday, it finished at seventy. After going to eighty, it dropped to sixty-four. Where it closed on Thursday, finished at seventy. It was up fifteen dollars today. And it finished with a $13 billion market cap. 
even though 100 million in sales and they lose money. And I want to make sure you know that price is what somebody's willing to pay. Because I bring up the crypto today. And how do I put this best? After reversing and busting and getting hit and getting... Bitcoin finished at 71,000 today. It was 63,000 two days ago. 15% move in the coins. And as you know, there were people calling for a million. Somebody called for three million on this. And we're just letting you know we don't understand anything by it. And we've heard supposedly the smartest people on earth explain why it's going up. And they make absolutely no sense. They're just kind of sort of throwing things against the wall. And because it's going up, it sticks. And we're bringing this up today is because, you know what questions being asked a lot now? Are we in a bubble? And you know what bubbles are? They are times in the markets where things get out of hand, where people buy at any price. And it does not matter what they buy as long as it's on the move. And we've seen bubbles in the NFTs. We've seen bubbles in the Game Stops and the Meme Stocks. Uh, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, they bubbled that up while they were going bankrupt. AMC Theater and, and others. There were some weird Chinese stocks that went from 10 bucks to, to 2000 and back to 10 within days. There's Beanie Babies. I, I can go through a litany of things. So we're just letting you know those things had a great day today. And I just want to let you know we're going to tell you exactly today what we've been saying to you. And that is... We're not going to tell you to buy, sell, short, or cover. But eventually, valuation will matter. Price will matter. Eventually, always comes around when we don't know. And I can tell you again, I experienced 99. I've studied 99. And there were multiple moves where you thought it was over and they made another move. And you thought it was over and they made another move. So where it stops, we don't know. And we can safely tell you, with the Bitcoin, at least, we thought March 5th was it. The big reversal top. And then they jammed it down from the high of uh, March 13th to March 20th. And I'm thinking, that's got to be it for now. Well... They rammed it today, 10, 11, 12% today. The crypto. And something like MicroStrategy was up 20%. Was up 20%. So we're just letting you know. They were hot again today. With the Dow down 162. Which is like 450 points in two days. Which, just ignore for this second, we'll explain why. S&P down 16, NASDAQ 44, NASDAQ 162, and they sold it actually down into the close. Transport's 101. And the interesting thing about today, AI, crypto. They had NVIDIA up 22 again, finished up 6 and change. A super micro did a secondary, didn't stop, was up 78 bucks today. Was up 100, I do believe. Excuse me. Here's how Super Micro works. It was up 70 today. It's already up nine bucks in the aftermarket. That's how that thing works. And the latest, and I want you to write these two initials down because you don't hear it from me often Micron. They had the big gap on Thursday, settled down Friday. The institutions were jumping all over today. Finished up 6% today, was up like 11%. But the AI bug has hit that in a big way now. Maybe just another name that is involved on the AI front. 
So, just letting you know, one hell of a crypto day, a pretty darn good AI day. Even at advanced micro devices with bad China news was down seven bucks early, finished only down a buck. It was actually up two bucks at one time. So let me repeat, a good AI day, an unbelievable crypto day. Stunning. But there was more. Trump. DWAC is the symbol that's merging with his so-and-so. Well, in case you don't know, well, we'll tell you in a second, that's the music. The news on the ex-president. I'm Gary. This is the one only Investor's Edge. Hi, I'm Gary Kalbaum, host of the nationally syndicated radio show, Investor's Edge. We're not just handsome radio people. We manage investors' money for a living, specializing in fee-based discretionary money management. No big commissions, just a fee on the assets that's managed. We also provide a full range of personalized services, including retirement planning, fixed income, and educational needs, all to assist you in achieving your financial goals. Understanding not all individuals have the same needs, we'll carefully evaluate your personal goals to determine a proper investment strategy. If your current approach to investing is not getting you to where you would like to be, call us to make an appointment for a complimentary portfolio review. The number to call is 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. Investment advisory services offered through Kaltbaum Capital Management. It's time to switch on the integrator units and get the brain cells working. You're listening to... Hey, this promises to be fun. Investor's Edge. The last bastion of quality programming. With Gary Kaltbaum. It doesn't get better than this. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. So the symbol for the Trump thing that's merging with this, uh, what is a true social... 35% today it was up. Why? You ready? Well, we had told you that, and under no uncertain terms, that this whole thing is a joke. They've targeted Trump. Two people. Imagine having your life turned upside down by a judge and an attorney general where the attorney general, before anything started up, said, we, we're coming after you. Oh, and they tried. So what they did was they hit him with a ridiculous. And, and, and remember, I can't stand the guy. I don't want these two running for president. Whoever wins, you deal with. And I, my hopes is if, pre, if Donald Trump wins, that he has good policy and he shuts the hell up and stops the Trump you know what I mean by that, right? Become a president. You know what I mean by that? Become presidential. That's the word. You know what I mean by that. But that's for another day. So they came in with this ridiculous amount. And just so you know, they were trying to destroy the man. Leave no doubt, these lefty liberal nut jobs that get, got power tried to destroy this man, and they came up with a number that was obscene, 350 million, plus he was being charged 9%, uh, anyway, it was up to 450 million. And I t said to you on the show, I don't know, how does that stand? It's something on appeal, something's got to be done. They came in at 175 million, so they lowered it big time. His stock's up 35 percent. We'll get into that in a second. They're giving him 10 days to come up with it. But here's the other part of this equation: to come up with that type of liquid, you should be given three months. This whole thing's asinine. And notice we haven't said guilt or innocent. But didn't OJ lose a civil trial and he paid $10 million or and never paid a dime? 
for murder. It's insanity. It is political. It is targeted. Leave no doubt. And I got to tell you, you people that hate him, that hate Trump, want him out. You people that love Biden, you people that are thrilled by this. You better wake up. Do you know why? You know what the words, the die has been cast, means? Do you not think there'll be retribution from another idiot on the other side? Remember, we have no bias. We, we, wanna, we believe in right and against wrong. This was a railroad. But anyway, the stock was up 35% today to 50 bucks. But I'm going to give you the warning shot. We have no idea where the stock goes. We're not going to tell you to buy, sell, short, or cover. Froth is froth. Speculation is speculation. Price is price. As long as somebody's willing to pay higher. I just want to let you know the company they merged it with is about as suspect as suspect can be. Just letting you know, Truth Social. They don't make money. They lose a ton. Revenues are... Wait a minute. I don't even know the number. How can that be? Well, you just know. It's not even close. Not even close. And they're giving it uh, uh, some asinine market cap also. So just letting you know. Just letting you know. Again... It finished around 50 bucks and go to 100 bucks tomorrow for all I know. That ALAB, Altera Labs, Astera Labs, closed at 85 today with a $13 billion market cap with 100 million sales. Go to 25 billion for all I know. We're just letting you know, eventually, always, always, price and valuation will matter. But right now, holy crap. And the crypto today, wow! Wow! That's all I can tell you. Wow! I don't get impressed by much. Wow! And where it stops, I don't know. And how it's maneuvering, I don't know either. I'm told that it's a lot of it is locked up between a few people. And since they're not selling anybody, you get what I'm saying when there's limited, drives price up. So just letting you know, wow, even got me today on being impressed. So just write down Micron. Just put it on your watch list. Finish today was not very good. Oil prices were up again again, again today. Yields were up a little bit. Just letting you know the price at the gas pump is going to be going up. Uh, if it isn't already up, it, it's going to be going up even more, which is not great news. And if you want to see a chart of the price of oil, go look at USO, and you can see it's turning up, has turned up, coming up the right side. And it's something to watch closely. And then the 10-year yield, which had backed off a little bit after uh, Mr. Bubble yapped on Wednesday. A break above 4.354 on the 10-year yield could be of consequence. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but higher yields have not been very friendly. 4.354, closed at 4.253%. And just remember, that's the free market. The fake market is Jay Powell and his Fed funds, which takes me to Reddit. Stock was up uh, 30% today to 60 bucks. Just letting you know. Um, $10 billion market cap, but they have about a billion in sales. No, I take it back. 345, 40, 640, about 800 mil. And they lost money in the last year. 
That said, big move today. So two IPOs. And I can promise you if IPOs start working, more will be coming out. That's how Wall Street works. But I have to tell you again, before the music plays, I could the crypto today, just wow. And I'm just talking Bitcoin, but everything else was up, I guess. The Ethereum. And I, there's still some coins around. And where it stops beats the heck out of me. Up next, uh, Boeing. The rest of the market. News of the day. I'm Gary. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Listening to America is talking. Investor's Edge. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on its feet here. He's a Cinderella boy. With Gary Kaltbaum. Comes highly recommended. You're going to feel better if you talk to him. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. So, by the way, I said earlier, just really don't pay much attention to the Dow dropping 470 points the last two days. The market's much better. Then the Dow drop in 470. Of course, if you own McDonald's, not good. Stock's breaking down. Don't know why. Just acting poorly. Uh, Visa in the Dow. Ooh, that's a little icky top. That didn't help. Apple. Well, we've been just telling you Apple for quite a while, and we just be on a void right now. We'll let you know if that changes. And then they brought some things in Microsoft. They were part of that China announcement, so they brought that back six bucks today. That didn't help the Dow. Goldman Sachs broke out and gives most of it back in two days. That didn't help. Home Depot, which has been acting well, dropped seven bucks today. That had a little breakout, and that tucked its head in like a frightened turtle already. So that's pulling back. Boeing. CEO gone. And a few others gone. And I'm thinking to myself, what have they been waiting for? That's number one. And number two, he's resigned, and they've resigned, whoever else. The end of 2024. Really? N nothing personal. But the Harry Truman sign about the buck stopping here has got to stop at the CEO. And his head honcho top dog's big cheeses. I am amazed at this magnificent, great company and the crap that's going on there, and the testimony and the words from Boeing employees saying they skimped on parts and labor on airplanes that go up 35,000 feet, and it took a door to come off, where luckily... They were only at, what, about 15,000 feet when it came off? Because if they were at 35,000, that sucker would have blown up. And they're lucky because the person, there was nobody sitting at the door, but the person a couple of feet away lost his shirt. And then you have a tire coming off another plane and another panel coming off and a few other things in the last few weeks. But we're going to let him stay till the end of the year? Again, nothing personal. But I got news for you. Thursday night, I'm flying on a 737. Coming back Saturday night on a 737. I fly the 777s all the time when I go across the pond. 
Great Plains. But man, oh man, underneath the surface, let's hope this is the big, fat, juicy, gargantuan wake-up call for whoever comes in to run that place. And a great wake-up call for every other, for Embrya and Airbus. I bet you they're in board meetings sitting down, okay, just want to make sure how we looking. Here's what we're hearing about Boeing. What do we do? Great wake-up calls. That's the Boeing. Just had to bring that up because, wow. And just so you know, this is one of these great, magnificent companies. I know some Boeing people that work there. They love their company. And they work so damn hard and make these great planes. Anyway, and and look, I'm the Weinstein with these planes. I just read what I read. And I read pretty big. I really get in depth on some of this stuff. Uh, What else? Let's see. Uh, Gold was up a little bit today, but came off the highs. Oil Oil stocks were mostly up. Uh, some commodities were up, but pulled back at the end of the day. Uh, the the crypto we already mentioned, the AI stocks, not all, but pretty damn good, but not a great finish today. Don't know if it means too much. The Dow is down 460 some odd points in two days. I'm giving it a no biggie so far. Is that okay? I'm giving it a no biggie. Let's see. 39781. Yeah, but almost um, 470 points. I'm calling it a pullback with some warts because McDonald's acts like crap. IBM stock may have topped near term. That was working. So you may be a few things going on here. But don't worry, just buy the crypto. Yay. I got a lot of questions on Tesla. And I don't have the answers to it, except to say, hmm, they say demand is down, but they're going to raise prices. Hmm. We'll see how that plays out. Still a weak stock. In the big names, Apple, Tesla, still very weak. Google, I was, until the AI announcement with Apple, was on the weak side. The rest, uh, AMD's been coming in, but Amazon's at the tips. Microsoft just was down six today off the highs. Facebook is fine. It was down six today. Oracle gapped up. Not working as of yet. No biggie. I think that covers it a little bit. Covered the yields. Advanced declines. Another little rough day today on that. And that's something we're watching. We mentioned to you how the advanced declines on the NASDAQ stink which means a lot of money's going into the few, which has to be watched closely. Big time watch closely. Okay, the news. What else is going on? California. We love talking about them. California fast food chains are now slashing workers in front of guess what's happening soon. $20 an hour minimum wage looms. So they're laying off staff and reducing hours. The people running California are sick in the mind. They have forgot there are two sides to the story. And when you force expenses on business that cannot afford expenses, And by the way, it's their business. They can decide on whether they can afford or not. You can't force that on them. They are going to take action. So already staff's being laid. All all kinds of things are going to come up to that. Why? Government thinks they're smarter than people running their own businesses. And government thinks business suck. 
They want more control over those businesses, even though most people in government have never run any of those businesses, never wrote out a check, never risked their capital, have lived off the taxpayer dole the whole time. And certain areas are worse than others. Certain states are worse than others. We'll see how this plays out. We'll cover it. It's just like Bernie Sanders says we should have a 32-hour week and, pay, and people get paid the same hour. And some numbskull wrote me up because I talked about it on, on Fox saying how bad it was. Uh, and, and they quoted that, oh, there was a poll. Uh, 90% of the people, employees said, oh, we'll go for 32 hours instead of 40 and get paid the same. Duh. And then they they pulled the businesses. Oh, the business said everything's fine. Oh, really? Meet any great success story. And they don't count hours. So when you 32-hour people, and that's all you want, because you want to just stay where you are, and you come up against competition of people that don't count hours, you're dead meat. Go listen to Bernie Sanders and constrict yourself and put a ceiling over yourself and you'll get past like you're standing still. Marxists suck. Up next, other news of the day and then we're gone. I'm Gary. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Listening to. What are we waiting for? Well, what are you waiting for? One, two, ready, go. Action! Investor's Edge with Gary Caldwell. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. And if you guys, not everybody knows me, whatever, but the people that know me know I love, I speak to pilots, I speak to machinists, the mechanics, when you have a chance, I'll stop on the jetway and a guy's there, and you can tell he's a mechanic, and you ask him, how, how's your day? What, what's up? You know, you, you, you learn a little bit. Muy importante. Unbelievable. People are going to lose their jobs because of California. Uh, in the news, hey, we, we, we just want to let you know our federal debt I don't know if it's going to continue every 90 days, but for the last 90 days, it's up a trillion bucks. Uh, percentage of spending as a percentage of GDP is at World War II levels when we had to spend like crazy. And of course, the numbers whopping. In 2023, we had to issue 23 trillion in U.S. treasuries. No, we're not making it up. Just letting you know. Debt. Just, just letting you know. Debt. Just letting you know, debt. Government. Have you been reading about the squatters? Do you know they arrested a homeowner for trying to get the squatters out of his home that he owns because of a moronic law? They arrested a homeowner. Because she changed the locks on her home. Because you, they say in New York, you, if you are in a house for 30 days, you legally become a tenant. Who the hell came up with that law? Who's the psychopath 
And how has that law not been changed? Squatters? What? Huh? In the news, and I was actually asked about this. Do you know this is Warren Buffett indicator? Oh, and by the way, I think it may be in May. I'm going to Nebraska for the first time. Oh, I've been to Nebraska, but I'm going to Warren Buffett's thingamabob. I think it's in May. I got to double check. Anyway, Warren Buffett has his own market gauge. Just letting you know. His own market gauge has had pretty darn good reputation. We're reading that his market gauge is at a two-year high, and they say the number is 184%, and it's way above what it should be. It takes in the combined market capitalization of all actively traded U.S. stocks and divides that figure by the latest quarterly estimate for gross domestic product, and they're telling me it's in the trees. It's in the redwoods. We'll see whether it's meaningful or not. But we were asked about it, so we figured we'd tell you about it. In the news, and here's where I just don't get it. Um, Ron DeSantis, my governor, is... uh, Sign the bill that will prohibit children under 14 from creating social media accounts. Hmm. This was could have been the next president. So parents don't count now? Social media accounts? Really? And, and you can't, uh, at 16, the 16 has to be approved by a parent? Am I correct in saying that? So here's a Republican, our governor, Ron DeSantis, that says government should not be intrusive. You can't open a social media account if you're under 14? Really? Really? Hmm. And by the way, I think... Too much of it is a problem. I've seen what kids do and stuff like that, but hmm, government telling parents? That's what you do when you're telling parents what their kids can or cannot do? Really? Is that breaking a rule of law? Just food for thought. Thought I'd bring that up. You see, I'm a big believer if you believe in limited government, it should be believing in limited government. Just a thought. I'm going to read up more about it. But it looks black and white to me. Interesting, huh? I think government should stay out of our lives except rule of law. Can't be a crook. Uh, But of course, we have some governments that allow you to be a crook. Again, arse backwards. Little pet peeve of mine. If you shoplift 30 times, you shouldn't be let out for the 31st. But they are. And don't get me started on. And that was the day. Big day for Trump. A little bit of a lifeline. He's not going to be able to sell the stock. There's a six-month restriction. And I doubt they'll do any exceptions. Uh, But uh, 175 is much better than 450. And they've set a date for his other trial, which is a criminal trial, April 15th, I believe. The, what, what's the stormy something trial? Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be one hell of a next six, seven, eight months. That's all I can tell you. 
That all said, you have a great evening. Drive carefully. When you get home, do like we do. Quite simple. Make sure you hug your family. Make sure you hug your children. They will feel better. You will feel better. I promise. Stay well. Be well. TV tomorrow. I'm not sure. Oh, and by the way, if I win the uh, Mega Millions tonight, what is it? One point something billion. Have a nice life. Take care. Bye-bye. This has been Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum on BizTalk. To listen to past episodes or to get in contact with Gary, go to GaryK.com. That's GaryK.com.